Zach with Wingard Wearables. You're a special person because you're one of 12 people that's going to watch this video to the end. And today we're talking about blades in the age of the gun. Uh, so a number of times people will bring up when they hear about, you know, knives or tomahawks or other things being used uh, for self-defense options. They'll say, oh, just use a gun. And uh, I've carried guns, uh, concealed carry for years. Uh, guns are great. They work until they don't work. Uh, the reason guns won't work in certain circumstances is if they are inoperable, inaccessible, or inappropriate in quickly uh, stopping a violent encounter. Uh, so guns being inoperable. Uh, if you go fast forward to before this nation's founding in this territory right here, we're in uh, Southeast Pennsylvania, uh, gun technology had been around for a few hundred years and it was still extremely primitive. Uh, you had on the frontier uh, hunters and uh, Native American warriors using muzzle-loading rifles with flintlock ignition. Now, flintlock ignition had an inconsistent uh, performance. About a one in seven shots would fail to fire. And the muzzle-loading of a rifle at the time before uh, the invention of the mini ball required engraving the projectile and pushing it down this long rifled barrel with a ramrod. So your reloading times were about four times as long as it took to reload a smoothbore musket. Um, so with the primitive firearms technology of that era, uh, you pulled the trigger once in a threatening situation against some man or beast, and hopefully it fired once. And then that was about it. Uh, you did not have, unless you ended that threat in a single shot, you did not have the expectation that you could reload it uh, for your own survival. So blades were very commonly carried. Uh, everyone carried a tomahawk. That was the primary uh, weapon because uh, at maximum reach, you had maximum lethality. Spike tomahawks were common too. Um, and long knives as a backup to the tomahawk even. Um, so you had a lot of... Uh, you know, blade violence on that was how it had to be resolved due to the primitive technology of the era. But you fast forward to today, um, firearms are not 100% uh, fully functioning. Uh, I've carried firearms for years. I've fired thousands of rounds. I don't know if I fired 10,000 rounds, uh, but somewhere between 1,000 and 10,000. I fired a lot of rounds and I've had uh, two uh, malfunctions that were not clearable. I'm not talking about jams. You can train to get most jams cleared very quickly. Uh, I had two different incidents, fortunately, which happened at the range that completely rendered the firearm uh, useless. So uh, I ha had an AR-15 that had a dropped primer. And if you're not familiar with that, the brass percussion primer, it's a little brass cup, when you have a drop primer, it extrudes and separates from the cartridge case. And in this incident, uh, the drop primer got flung back behind the bolt carrier uh, as the bolt carrier was moving rearwards and extracting the fired round. Now, brass is a soft metal, so that primer cup got shredded into bits by the bolt carrier. Uh, but brass is still a metal, so as the bolt carrier traveled forwards to chamber the next round, it became seized by the bits of brass. So I had a half chambered 5.56 round. And they, these were M193 cartridges, so they were mill standard. Um, and it was just seized. Uh, it required a person holding on to the AR-15 while I had a wooden peg and a mallet to tap the bolt back uh, before I could disassemble the weapon. Um, so uh, I also had another incident involving a primer with a uh, snub nose revolver. So that primer pushed rearwards, and this was with self-defense ammo. I believe it was gold dot was what I was firing. Um, but the primer pushed rearwards and seized the cylinder. So there was no way for the cylinder to move. Double action, single action, didn't matter. Uh, and that also required a wooden peg and a mallet gently tapping to swing out the cylinder. Um, had either of those incidents happened in a self-defense situation where a violent encounter needed to be ended quickly, uh, you would have to go to some backup weapon and not everyone can carry a backup gun. Um, so a blade could come into play. 
Um, now, firearms can also be inaccessible. Um, in our wonderful state of Pennsylvania, it's not that hard to get a concealed weapon permit, uh, but we live on the border of two states that do not have reciprocity uh, with Pennsylvania. So about 99% of the time that I leave my house, I cannot legally carry a firearm uh, because I go you know, sales tax free shopping in Delaware or I have work errands to run in Maryland. Uh, even when I run errands within Pennsylvania, it's usually to go to the post office to ship one of our wonderful products to our happy customers, or it's to go to a bar and have a beer while I talk to a blacksmith about some future product that we're working on. So 99% of the time that I leave the house, I cannot legally carry a firearm, even though I'm in a state where I have a permit to carry. And that applies to millions of Americans. Uh, that are in a similar situation where they can have a permit, but their daily lives require them to travel to places where they're not allowed. Um, and that even happens in Texas. Uh, we love Texas. Texas is the number one state by far that purchases our wonderful tomahawks. Um, but Texas, a weapon-loving state, uh, there are many places you cannot legally carry a firearm in Texas. And one of those places is any establishment that has over 50% of its revenue from the sale of alcohol. So we have a customer who has bought, what, three of these, two of these, three of these, three Empress Tomahawks, not just because they're beautiful and amazing, but because they're extremely effective in close quarters combatives, and he can't legally carry a firearm when he's running security at the strip club. Uh, strip clubs do not get... Uh, well, I don't know this knowledge, but I, I've been told that strip clubs get their revenue not from the dollar bills stuffed in the ladies, uh, you know, what little clothing they're, they're given, but uh, due to alcohol sales. Uh, so even though he's not touching a drop of liquor, he cannot have a firearm, even though he's got a, a permit to carry and that sort of thing. When he runs security, uh, he picks the next most lethal weapon he can, which is a tomahawk. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of uh, legal complications for carrying a gun uh, in areas, even in states where you think you can carry it anywhere. Well, you can't, uh, it's not everyone can. Uh, there are other reasons that a firearm could be inaccessible even in your home. Like e almost every state, you can have a gun in your home to defend yourself. Um, but there are many life situations where making that accessible uh, is just, unwise or uncalled for. So if you have uh, children in the house, if you have youths that aren't terribly responsible, uh, I had a uh, guy at my church, uh, his young teenage age son got access to a 45 ACP pistol and had a negligent discharge in the house. Fortunately, no one was, uh, you know, injured, uh, but that can happen. Um, we can also have, you know, suicidal family members in the household. Um, you know, I lost a cousin who I loved. He took his life with a fire. Um, you can also have potentially homicidal household members. Our favorite neighbor in the neighborhood, we love this guy. Um, he was trained to kill as a Marine. He served his country. Uh, he is elderly now. Two months ago, I get a knock on the door. Um, he was clearly in a state of emotional distress. The crinkling noises you're hearing during this most serious part of the story is a cat scrambling around our house. He is going nuts. Quit it. This is a serious part of the story. All right, so the back to this is seriously heart wrenching because we, we love this neighbor. Um, he told me that there were armed army men in the trees of his yard and he started cussing about it. He was very agitated about these armed army men that had no permission on his property. Um, so if you have a person who is, you know, trained to kill, they're getting older, they have access to firearms and they're hallucinating dangerous situations that aren't occurring, what is the probability of some tragedy occurring out of that circumstance? It's not zero. Uh, so there are a number of personal reasons why you can have a gun legally in your house, but it can't be accessible. Uh, so when you have people that just say, ah, oh, just use a gun, they aren't really thinking through all these circumstances. The last circumstance is the most extreme and unpleasant, and that's when you need to end a violent encounter very quickly. You have a firearm, 
but the use of the firearm is inappropriate. Uh, we all have these wonderful smartphones. Uh, we all stare into them and see, at least in this past year, uh, more unpleasant violence than ever, just in streaming through the phone. I remember one of these unpleasant violent incidents. A policeman was locked in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a violent suspect who either was going for his gun and also had a knife. So it's kind of like they both had each other's wrists grabbed as hard as they could, and they were standing and spinning. And this cop's partner comes up, handgun in the low rating, and he knew, he had enough sense to know that he couldn't just start popping off rounds because he had a very high probability of injuring his partner. Um, he had enough sense to know that he couldn't even close into that entangled mess and press the muzzle of the gun against the suspect and fire because, again, due to that chaos, there was no way the passage of that bolt projectile uh, could be assured to not injure his partner. Um, so he, instead, he just kept the pistol at low ready. He had this look on his face that clearly showed he was not prepared for the situation. He couldn't use chemical spray. He couldn't use a taser. This was a time where a blade would have been very handy. Um, the other kind of uh, entanglement incident could happen in your yard with not a single violent person around for miles. Uh, you could be in your home cleaning your weapon it's a peaceful day and you hear screams in your own yard where a toddler is being, who's not your toddler, is being attacked by a dog that is not your dog. That can happen. Dog attacks happen every day and they almost always happen against children, like medium to large sized dogs mauling children. So if you run out there, toddler has a dog on its face, the mother is pulling on the toddler, the father is pulling on the dog, and you've got your gun, the gun will not be the optimal solution. Uh, a blade will. Uh, now, speaking of blades, you know, knives, they work, um, but they have to target fleshy areas. Um, you're relying on exsanguination, which is slow, or trying to sever nerves and tendons and muscles to get a sort of a mechanical degradation of uh, the creature or human that you're trying to disable. Um, we really think our tomahawks have a lot of uh, advantages over the knife. Um, they don't have a thrusting point. You'll notice the spike is downturned, so you can thrust this into an entangled mess um, and retract against uh, the violent man or beast, lock into the skeletal structure, and literally peel them off. Uh, you also have the chopping blade, which to the back of the skull would be very lethal or against an animal where its top of the spine is exposed, uh, a chop to the central nervous system, the spinal cord, would greatly disable it. Our cats are just going nuts, speaking of hostile animals here. They're making all sorts of noise off screen. Um, you know, for such an unpleasant topic, we are getting some levity here with these cats. You guys can't be quiet for like, how long is this video so far? 13 minutes. Oh my gosh, no wonder. This is way too long of a video. All right, so firearms, they work. I love guns. I've carried guns for years. They work until they don't work. When they're inoperable, inaccessible, or just simply inappropriate. Um, so if you're serious about your self-defense, even if you got a gun, you're well-trained, and you got a backup gun or whatever, do consider a Tomahawk as an option for when you can't carry a gun or can't bring it to bear. Um, Unfortunately, this example, this is my personal carry back ripper. I don't have a new one to show you because we've been sold out for, we haven't had them available on the storefront in, what, two months? So if you want a back ripper Tomahawk, which is awesome, um, shoot us an email. We'll try to get you on our list. Uh, we're only making like eight a month if we're lucky. Um, and we're kind of back ordered through at least mid-May. So go ahead and reach out to us. But we do have these wonderful Empress Tomahawks uh, available now. So check those out. Um, it's too long of a video. Uh, it's over 13 minutes long. And speaking of the number 13, you're one of 12 people that finished this video. Share it with a friend so 13 people will have watched it. Um, you guys have a happy Easter. And remember to be edgy.